Hello guys, my name is Wang Kwong Chechuku and we are continuing on our series of um, CV211 tutorials and on today's episode we are going to be solving this question a question from 2018 to 2019 question um, examination rather Determine the forces in the members of the pin jointed of the pin jointed cross shown below. So this is the pin jointed cross. So we are going to be analyzing this cross. So I welcome you guys as we go on this ride. So um, first things first, we are going to draw. The free body diagram. So I already explained what the a free body diagram is. Drawing the cross in such a way that you represent all the forces. was AV and this is BV so I think um, that is all for our free body diagram that's all for our free body diagram for now so the next thing we need to do is um, get equilibrium equations equilibrium equilibrium equations for the entire truss. So the reason we are getting the equilibrium equations for the entire truss is to get the values. We want to first get the values of what AV and BV. So we start with um, <coughs> sum of vertical forces. Sum of vertical forces is equal to what zero, which we normally know as what upward forces is equal to downward forces. So we have that um, our upward forces are 25 kilonewtons plus 25 plus 25. Okay, these are downward forces rather equals to upward forces AV and BV. All right, so we have um, AV plus BV is equal to 75 kilonewtons. This is not enough. For us to get the values of um, AV and BV, so we need to add another equation. So we use the moment equation, which is um, sum of moments. Let's use sum of moments about A is equal to zero, right? <coughs> so we check all the forces from A and their distance from A. So we have 25 kilonewton. We're going to multiply it by the distance from A is going to be what? 5 meters. This other 25 kilonewtons has a distance of what? 5 plus 5, that is 10 meters. And this other uh, 25 kilonewtons has a distance of um, 5 plus 5 plus 5, that is 15 um, meters. And then this BV, uh, the last force, it has a distance of what? 20 meters from A. So, um, as usual, you check clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. I remember I told you that the clock um, moment is the, the effect of the moment is you know trying to bend the the structure. So these ones acting on top now, this way five on top, they are trying to bend it like this, and this BV is trying to bend it this way. So it's acting in the opposite direction. So we have um, twenty five times five plus. 25 times 10 plus 25 times 15 is equal to BV times 20. So um, solving this, we have 20 BV is equal to, by then you simplify this with your calculator, you're going to be getting 750 kilonewton meter right so in the end we have that um 
BV is equal to <coughs> 750 divided by 20, we're going to be getting 37.5 kilonewtons. So we now recall that then AV plus BV is equal to 75. That means AV is 75 minus, we, got, we already have BV as 37.5. That means AV is also what? 37.5. So now we have our AV and BV, we can start analyzing our trusses. Okay guys, um, for clarity's sake, I'm going to leave the free body diagram here so that um, we can always refer to it. Then um, I'll complete the angles. This is theta. This is theta. We know alternate angles from our... Uh, um, This is theta. Okay, so um, the next thing we need to do is to determine the angles, right? Now we need to find the value of um, this theta. The importance is this: we are going to resolve all this diagonal, all these forces acting diagonally. We are going to have to resolve them horizontally and vertically. And from our knowledge of physics, we know in order to do that, we need to know this angle, right? And you know that then when you're closing, you use cos theta, and when you're opening, you use sine. So let's go ahead and determine the values of cos and sine theta. So we have this. I'm taking this very first triangle. I have theta, I have 5, and I have 4 here. Right, and this is x. So using Pythagoras theorem, x squared is equal to 4 squared plus 5 squared, and this should give us 41. That means x is equal to the square root of 41, which is well, 6.4. So we have that um, sine theta is going to be opposite of our hypotenuse, which is what 4 over x, that is 4 over 6.4. It should give us 0 0.625 and cos theta should be adjacent to the hypotenuse which is 5 over 6.4 which will give us 0 0.78125 So guys, um, we're going to start with, um, okay, like we say the method we are the method we are going to be using to solve this is what method of joints. It's called method of joints, right? So we are going to be resolving each of the joints. Right? We are going to be resolving each of the joints in the truss. So these are what we call joints, right? All these are joints. So we're going to be resolving them one by one till we get to the end. So we'll start with joint A. <coughs> Um, that would join A that I'll bring out all the forces in joint A and we have this. Let's leave it joint A. So we have this. So first off, you identify the known forces. We have AV, which is what? 37.5. Right? This is AV. This is our AV, this force right here, is 37.5. Now, another thing you need to do, once you've gotten the known force, let me write this better, let me write this clearer. Once you've gotten the known, the direction of the known force, all the other forces will assume them to be in tension, right? So the direction, tension is, um, the force is in, remember it's in tension when it's going out of the joint, when the force is going out of the joints, this is the joints. So if it's going out of the joints, it's in tension. And if it's coming into the joints, it's in compression. So what we what we do is we assume that everything is in tension, right? So if we get a, a positive value, it means what? That the, the member is in tension. If we get a negative value, it means that the member is in compression, right? So just know that you are, once you assume a direction, 
when you solve and your answer is positive, the direction you assumed is what? Correct. And when you solve and your answer is negative, the direction you assumed is wrong. So um, <clears throat> for this, let me just write it down so that you take note of it. Um, positive tension, right? And then negative, what? Compression. So like I said, you assume that all members are intention <clears throat> so um this force here is acting from here so i call it af and this one i call it ac so let's call this force af and call this what force ac right so we are going to resolve this horizontally and vertically vertically and horizontally so let's start with the vertical forces Summation of vertical forces is equal to zero. So <clears throat> these two forces are going uh, in the same direction, right? In the same direction. So you, we have 37.5 plus F A F, which are the upward forces, is equal to zero. Zero because there is no force acting downward. So we have um, 37.5 is equal to um, let me write this better. I have FAF, right, is equal to minus 37.5 kilonewtons. Now, the fact that this, ne this is negative means that this force is in what? Compression. Then we do summation of um, horizontal forces is equal to zero. So we have that, um, this, uh, this is the only horizontal force we have, there's nothing here. So we have that what? FAC is equal to zero. It's equal to zero because there is no force acting on this side. So it's, it's, not, um, it's, not compression, it's not compression of tension, there's no force acting in that member. Okay, so um, um, I'm going to have to be cleaning the board a lot often, so please just make sure you're, you're taking notes, you're taking notes so we don't lose track of, the, of our values. So we'll move over to our next joint, which is, um, let's go to joint F. Now, um, there's something important about choosing the next joint to work on. Now, the reason I went to joint F is I'll, I'll just be ticking for, for, um, so that I would understand. We found this and we found this from our previous question, right? Now, if I come to joint C, right, all the members entering joint C, I have one, two, three, four. I have four members, one, two, three, four, right? And out of these four members, I know just one, right? I found just one of them three are unknown, right? That means I need like three equations. So I need to look for a joint where I have less than, I um, um, have two, at least um, I have not more than two unknowns, right? So that's why I chose F, right? Now, if you look at F, we have, we've already found this, right? But we've not found this and this. This is why I chose F. So when, when you're choosing the next joints to go to, have, you have to always consider that. So now at joint F, let's draw the diagram. We have something like this. Mm, yeah, something like this. And we already, okay. There's no um, giving force. There's no giving force here. Everything is, you know, from our calculation. So we assume that all the forces are intention moving out of the joint all right so this is f f a this is f f g and this is f what f c all right so here now we're going to have make use of what theta this is where our theta is all right this is let's call it joint f so what are the things we already know? We already know um, F, F, A from the previous calculation that we did, right? And we got it as, um, that's from 
what does minus 37.5 kilo newton that's the only preliminary information that we have so let's um let's walk let's walk to complete let me divide this let's walk to complete the others so we start and resolving our forces sum of vertical forces is equal to zero so we have f f a plus they act because they're acting in the same direction f c so i resolve f c to the to the vertical axis so like i said when you're closing you use cos but when you're opening the angle you use what sine so we have um, f f a plus f this is f f c sorry plus f f c sine theta is equal to there's no force acting in the opposite direction so we have it as zero right so we already know f f a as minus 37.5 f f c is unknown but we know that sine theta from our calculation before we know that sine theta is equal to 0 0.625 so we have 0 0.625 f f c is equal to zero right now from this we have um, 0 0.625 ffc is equal to what taking this over you have 37.5 and you divide both sides by 0 0.625 you have that ffc is equal to 37.5 all over 0 0.625 that will give us 60 kilonewtons <clears throat> then we move to the horizontal force we move to the horizontal force which is a uh, assumption of horizontal force is equal to zero right now if you look at the horizontal forces here we have ffg and then we also have this when you resolve it to the horizontal axis so we have ffg plus f f c we are closing the angle so we are going to use cos theta is equal to zero right so f f g is unknown plus um but we already know f f c which is 60 kilonewtons 60 into brackets and now we know cos theta is 0 0.78125 is equal to zero so ffg is just going to be the negative of this when you transfer it to the other side which is going to be minus 46.875 kilonewtons then without much delay let's go to joints now like i said you choose the joints as a um, <clears throat> I'm not going to um, explain this again so we understand. You choose the joint that has not more than two unknowns. So we found this and we've also found this. Now, if we choose G, right? If we choose G, we don't know this, we don't know this, we don't know this. So there are three unknowns. So we choose C, right? From C now, the only two we don't know are just this member and this member. So let's use joint C so from joint C we have a diagram like this like this like this and like this is all the members we have right <clears throat> now there's no member like there's no force given to us already all the other forces are, are assumed by us so we assume all of them to be what acting acting at tension and then we have our theta here right so all we need to do now is um write down the things that are already given okay let me label them first off so this is c so this is an f c d from the diagram c d f c a f c g and f c f right so we've already found this we already found this from the previous question and we got it uh got our values 
as we check FFC, that's what we wrote it as previously, is 60 kilonewtons. So we already know that then um, FFC is equal to what? 60, sorry, FCF is equal to 60 kilonewtons. Now, please don't get confused that I'm writing um, CF and FC. They are basically the same thing, but the reason I'm representing it differently is because now as I'm saying CF, it means I'm checking from C. That's why all these ones you have, this is CG, this is CD, this is C, um, CA, right? F, you see um, FG, FC, FA, you understand? So um, let's do the sum of vertical forces equals zero. So we have, um, you check the vertical forces. The only vertical forces we have are this vertical force here, and then this when you resolve it onto when you resolve it on the vertical axis. So we have um, FCG plus FCF. Now we are opening this angle, so we are going to use sine theta equals to zero. So we don't know FCG, but we know FCF, right? Which is sixty kilonewtons. So we have FCG, right? FCG plus 60 kilonewtons times, and we know sine theta as 0 0.625, which is equal to zero. So let's um, complete it here. So we have that FCG is equal to minus 60 bracket 0 0.625. And um, <coughs> multiplying this is going to give us minus 37. 0.5 kilonewtons. So this is negative, so it's going to be in compression. Don't worry, we'll still write this at the end, but at least um, you just know that whenever you see a negative force, when you get a negative answer, remember it's in compression, and when you get a positive answer, is in tension. So um, get to the summation of the horizontal forces. So summation of horizontal forces is equal to zero. Then we have um, FCA plus we have FCF. We are closing the angle now. We are closing the angle, so we are going to use cos theta, and this is going to be equal to FCT, right? So we already know FCA. And we know FCF as well. Like I said, FCF and FFC are the same thing. It's just this time around we are working from C. You understand? So we know um, FCF as 60 kilonewtons, and we know FCA as um, zero from our previous calculation. So we have that um, FCD, let me bring FCD to this side, is equal to zero plus um, 60. And we know cos theta as what? 0.78125. So this is going to give us 46.875 kilonewtons. So our FCD is what? 6.875 kilonewtons. So we we'll move to the next joint. Joint G. No, no. Subsequently, I won't be explaining because I'm. I expect to understand why I do this. Now, why didn't I go to D or any of these other ones here? If you look at D, okay, we found C D already, but there are three unknowns. We, we've not found this G and D G. We've not found D H. We've not found D E. So. That's a lot of um, unknowns. So we move over to G. We know FG. We know um, CG. The only two that we don't know are just this GH and then um, GD. So a G is a preferable option. So let's um, get a picture of what we have here. And it's. So we have our 25 kilonewtons coming from here. Let me just replace it as 25. And I have my FGF, FGH, and FGD, F, 
GC. Right? So, like I said, you assume that all other forces, apart from the ones that are already given to us, like this, and you assume that all others are acting away from the joint, meaning that we assume that their, their intention. So, <clears throat> the things that we already know here are F, G, F from our previous calculation, that's minus 46.875 kilonewtons. And we also know FGC from joint C as a minus 37.5 kilonewtons. So the first thing we do is um, summation of um, vertical forces. So we have 25. FGC and the resolution of this, they are all acting in the same direction. So we have uh, 25 plus FGC plus FGD. Sorry, I forgot to add our theta. This is where our theta is. Plus FGD. Now we are opening, so we use what? Sine theta, which is equal to zero. Right? So we have um, 25 plus minus 37.5 plus um, 0.625 FGD is equal to zero, right? So this bring up, brings us down to minus 12.5 plus 0.625 FGD equals to zero. So if you I will run and solve this. We have that FGD is equal to 20 kilonewtons. So let's quickly do the summation of um, horizontal forces. Let's do the summation of horizontal forces. So here we have that uh, <coughs> we have FGH and then we have the resolution of this horizontally and we have this. So acting in opposite direction. So we have an um, F G F is equal to F G H plus F G D. We are closing this time around, so we have um, cos theta, right? So this is going to give us um, F G F is minus forty six point eight seven five. FGH is um, unknown. FGH is unknown. And FGD, because theta, we already found FG, FGD here, so we have 20 bracket 0 0.78125. Right? So if you simplify this, if you simplify this further, we're getting FGH is equal to less. Let me check it on the calculator. So we have FGH is equal to, okay, minus 62.5 kilonewtons. So please confirm this with your, on your own end with your calculator. So let's move on to joint D. So um, this is what we have at joint D. So I don't know if there's any need for me to explain why I'm using joint D again. But then for the sake of clarity, I'll keep explaining this because the more you hear it, the more you get to understand it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> this is joint D, right? Now this is joint D. I didn't use H because, okay, we know we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. So I didn't use H because we have one, two, three unknowns, but D we have just two unknowns. So that's why I'm using D. And what are the things we already know? The things we already know, um, we know this and we know this. So we know F, dg we know fdg to be what 20 kilonewtons and we know also know fdc to be 
46.875 kilonewtons. So let's start with the summation of vertical forces. Summation of vertical forces is equal to zero. So let me grab this out. So <coughs> we have only two vertical forces here. That's when you resolve this vertically and then this on its own. We have FDH, FDH plus FDG. Um, resolving FDG, we are opening the angle. So we have we use sine, sine theta equals zero, right? And um, we already know FDG, so we we'll use it to get them um, FDH. So we have FDH plus um, 20, sine theta is 0 0.625 equals to zero. So solving this, that's carrying this over to the other side, we have FDH is equal to minus, <coughs> it's because it's going to be, it's going to be negative. We have FDH is equal to minus 12.5 kilonewtons. Negative meaning that the force is in compression. So we resolve horizontally to summation of horizontal forces is equal to zero. So horizontally we have FDC. Now we have this when it's resolved horizontally. And then we have FDE. So we have FDC plus FDG cos theta is equal to FDE. And we already know FDC, so we have um, 46.875 plus we know FDG as well, which is 20, and we know cos theta as 0 0.78. 125 is equal to FDE. So simplifying this on your calculator gives us that FDE is equal to what? 62.5 kilometers. Alright, so we move ahead to um, we move ahead to to the next joint. So let's say joint H. So we can move to joint H now because we already know we've done this, we've done MDH, right? So we know this, so it reduces the number of uh, unknowns. So let me depict this. Sorry. So this is the force that is given to us, which is 25. Then we assume the direction of the other ones to be going out of the joint. So we have this as F. HG, FHD, FHE, and FHI, right? So what are the things that we already know? We already we know that FHG, we know this, FHG is equal to, from our previous calculations, is 2.5 kilonewtons. And we know that F H D as well, which is known, is equal to minus twelve point five kilonewtons. Right? So with this, with this, okay, let me continue. Here. With this, we have we start with summation of vertical forces. Right? We start with the summation of vertical forces, and from our vertical forces, we have this. We have this, we have this as well when you resolve it. So the, the three of them are acting in the same direction. So we just right 25 plus FHD plus FHE. Okay, we have our theta here. So we are opening, so we use sine plus FHE sine. theta and this is going to be equal to zero right now if we continue solving this we have that 25 plus we have our FHD already which is minus 12.5 um, plus our sine theta is 0 0.625 0 0.625 FHE is equal to 
zero. So let's um I would allow you to exercise your brain small a little bit. So we'll simplify this. By the time you simplify this, we are going to be getting 0 0.625 FH FHE is equal to minus 12.5. Making FHE equal to minus twenty kilonewtons. So let's get to the summation of horizontal forces. So we already um, know that. FHG is equal to FHI plus FHE cos theta. So we already know um, FHG as what? Minus 62.5. FHI is unknown and FHE is minus 20. We know that cos theta is 0 0.78125. Now, simplifying this, you have FHI is equal to. So, like I said, that will allow us to be working with our calculators <clears throat> minus 46.875 kilonewtons. Please confirm that this value is correct. So we can move to the next joint. So at the um, joint E, joint E, let me write the values we already have before I draw the diagram. So we have that FEH is equal to minus 20 kilonewtons and FED is equal to 62.5 kilonewtons from our previous calculations. So this is what um, the joint as E looks like. Right, so we have our theta here. And then um, we have this as, I have everything going out of the Sorry, F E D, F E H, F I, F E I, and here we have F E B. Right. So we go ahead to begin our solving. So we start with the um, resolving on the vertical axis. Summation of vertical force is equal to zero. So we have F E I. FEH, FEI plus now this FEH. We are opening the angle, so we use a um, sine theta equal to zero, right? So we have this that um, we, we know that FEH is minus 20 kilonewtons. We have FEI. Is equal to okay. Let me just write here plus minus 20 sine theta. We know is 0 0.625 equal to zero. So <clears throat> if you carry this over to this side and simplify, we're going to be getting that FEI is equal to 12.5 kilonewtons. Then the summation of the horizontal forces. Let's go to the summation of the horizontal forces. So horizontally we have this, we have this, and we have the resultant of this horizontally. So we have FED, right? FED plus FEH. You are closing, so it's cos theta is equal to FEB. What we are looking for is FEB, so I can just quickly make FEB the subject of the formula. 
to FEV is equal to, we know FED already as 62.5, and then we know FEH as uh, minus 20, and we know cos theta as 0 0.78125. Right, so when you solve this with your calculator, you should get a value for the 6.875 kilo newtons. So this is intention because it's positive. Like I said, we are still going to write out everything. It's it's the the direction of the force is very very important as is as important as the value of the force itself. Okay, um, so for joint I, I already have the diagram drawn, so I'm just going to explain it. This is where this is joint I, you can see that the diagrams are similar. So, um, we have this force that's already given to us the 25 kilonewtons, so we already assume it's that we already have its direction, and then we assume the direction of every other force to be what's in tension that's going away from the joint, and um, we already have two of them given from our previous calculations. So we have FIH to be minus 46.85 and FIE to be 12.5 kilonewtons. So we can just go ahead and you know, start resolving the forces. So we have summation of vertical forces is equal to zero, right? So these are the vertical forces 25, FIE, and then if you resolve this on the vertical axis, FIB um, sine theta. So we have 25 plus um, 25 plus FIE plus FIB sine theta is equal to zero. So we have that um, 25 plus, we know that our FIE is 12.5 plus um, sine theta is 0 0.6. So 0 0.625 FIB is equal to zero, right? So we have um, this 0 0.625 FIB, right, is equal to, my time is sum this up and take it over to the other side, we have minus 37.5, right? And dividing, you're going to have FIB is equal to minus 60 kilo newtons and the force is in <laughs> compression because it's negative so we do the summation of the horizontal by then we do the summation of the horizontal we start seeing the values coming out so in the horizontal we have fih we have fig and we have the resolving of this on the horizontal axis so we have fih is equal to FIB cos theta because we are closing the angle cos theta plus what? FIJ. So, what are the things we already have? We already know our FIH and we already know our FIB. So, we just we are looking for FIJ, right? So, we have minus 46.875 equal to. Um, we got our FIB as minus 60, minus 60 point, okay, minus 60, bracket 0 0.78125 plus FIG. So if you check your calculator as well, solving this, you're going to get um, minus 46.875, which is, uh, which when you cross over, it's going to cancel out. So you can just confirm with your calculator again. So FIG to give us zero. So quickly, let's move on to the last joint, joint B. Now this is a, this is gonna be the most simple joint that we solve. Now we've gotten all of this. If you check your calculations, we've gotten all of this and this. So the only thing we haven't gotten is just is this for this member JB, right? Or BJ, and anyhow you want to put it. So that's what we're going to do from B. So since we're looking for just one member, we need just one um, force equation. So we use sum of um, vertical forces is equal to zero, right? So let me quickly, okay, before, I, before that, let me draw the diagram. 
at joint V, we have this, 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 and then don't forget the reaction, which is then uh, that's 7.5. So this one, the direction is already given. So this is the direction for the reaction. But for the others, we just um, assume them to be moving away from B. Okay, so this is B, and we have F, B, E, we have F, B, I, and we have F, B, J. Right, so the ones are already known, F, B, I is equal to minus 60 kilonewtons, F, B, E, is equal to 46.875 kilonewtons. So we do our summation, yes, we do our summation of vertical forces equal to zero. So these are the vertical forces here, this 37.5, this um, this um, FBJ here, and then when we resolve this FBI on the vertical axis, so we have FBI sine Theta, okay, this is where our theta is. Sorry, I make omitted that. Sine theta plus FBJ plus 37.5. They are all acting in the same direction. That's why we have plus, plus, plus all the way. Now equal to zero. So we have FBI as, um, let me this out. We have FBI as minus 60. Um, sine theta as 0.625. Plus um, FB plus FBJ. Okay, let me add this to seven point plus seven point five plus FBJ, right? Is equal to zero. So if we simplify this, simplify this, this plus this, it's going to give us minus thirty seven point five plus thirty seven point five plus FBJ plus FBJ equal to zero, meaning that what FBJ, because this is going to cancel this, right? Minus plus, minus 37.5 plus 37.5, FBJ will give us what? Zero. So this is the very last member, right? This is the very last member. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to write out all the forces and write out the ones that are in tension and the ones that are in compression. Okay guys, so um, this is the first table. So here you have each of the members, right? You have each of the members. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. There are 17 members and each of their forces are here and then you also indicate if it's if it's compression if it's tension and <clears throat> that's that for cross analysis so this is 24 marks um looking at you right in the eye so it's there for the taking it's just left for you to get it so that's um all we have that's all we have for this cross analysis and I strongly believe that um, each and every one of us has you know, gained immense knowledge from this question and we should be able to solve any trust analysis question that we come across. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to having you next time.